Welcome to this presentation to the new GRI Water and Affluence 2018 reporting standard. In this 20-minute video, you will learn about the key features of the standard and how to apply it. The GRI Water and Affluence reporting standard is one of the GRI sustainability reporting standards. Also known as a GRI standards, they are the most widely used framework for sustainability reporting. The GRI standards, which reflect global best practice, are designed to help organizations report publicly on their impacts on the economy, the environment and society. In other words, they are designed to show how companies contribute positively or negatively to the goal of sustainable development. Close to 4,000 organizations around the globe use the GRI standards and more and more governments and market regulators are adopting policies to encourage and regulate sustainability reporting. More than 100 policy instruments in 56 countries and regions and in 35 stock exchanges reference the standards already. Reporting publicly about a company's impacts, including water and affluence, has many benefits. For one, it provides the necessary information to everyone to understand how a company is contributing to sustainable development. This drives improvement within organizations and informs decision makers, like investors or governments. It also creates the basis for a constructive dialogue between the companies and their stakeholders. The standards are organized in a modular structure. There are three universal standards that apply to every organization that wants to report on its sustainability efforts. The starting point is GRI 101 Foundation, which sets the principles for defining the content of the report. GRI 102 General Disclosures is used to report on the contextual information of the organization and its reporting practices. And GRI 103 Management Approach is used for reporting on how organizations manage each topic that is material. Material topics are those that reflect the economic, environmental, and or social impacts and therefore the contributions, positive or negative, towards the goal of sustainable development. GRI 103 is designed to be used together with a library of topic-specific standards. The 33 topic-specific standards are designed to report specific information on a wide range of economic, environmental and social topics, including anti-corruption, human rights and, of course, water and affluence. Each organization can select which topic-specific standards to report on their material topics. Because the standards are modular, they can be updated independently to respond to new developments and stay up-to-date and relevant for reporters. This is what we've done with GRI 303 Water and Affluence. You can download the GRI standards for free on the GRI standards website, together with more information on how to use the standards, training materials and translations. The process of developing or updating a standard, like this update of GRI Water 2016 reporting standard, is overseen by the Global Sustainability Standards Board, the GSSB, an independent standard setting body of GRI. All standards are developed through a transparent and inclusive process and in the public interest. The information about the standard setting process is available on the GRI website. The content of this standard was developed by a multi-stakeholder working group with leading experts and practitioners on water stewardship from civil society, investors, business and international and governmental institutions from around the world. Working group members included representatives from organizations leading in the advancement of water stewardship through developing reporting metrics, impact measurement tools and best practices. Some of these have included the World Resources Institute, the World Wildlife Fund, the Pacific Institute, CDP and Ceres, among many others. Practitioners from high impactful sectors on water use, like the mining industry, beverage producer company and the textiles, have brought in examples of best practices in water management and reporting. A draft of the standard was released for two public comments and received nearly 800 comments from stakeholders. Please visit the project page for more information about the review process. G 
GRI 303 Water 2016 has been revised to meet several objectives. Existing concepts and methodologies for measuring and managing water have evolved significantly in recent years. There has been a shift towards water stewardship rather than water management and towards the adoption of context-based water targets and metrics. So the standard was revised to represent internationally agreed best practice and align with these recent developments. Experts from the World Wildlife Fund, the World Resources Institute and the International Union for Conservation of Nature have provided invaluable guidance on context-based metrics, water stress assessment methodology and reporting on water quality. Another key objective has been harmonization with other reporting standards and frameworks. For example, the revised water and effluent standard is aligned as much as possible with the revised questions in the CDP water questionnaire that was released in May 2018 and with the disclosures in the CEO water mandate corporate water disclosure guidelines. The standard also addresses the investor's perspective as it introduces disclosures that will make available much needed information to assess companies' exposure to water risks. Finally, the standard has a basis on the Sustainable Development Goals, particularly Goal 6, which addresses issues of drinking water, sanitation and hygiene, and quality and sustainability of water resources worldwide. The revised water and effluent standard provides a holistic framework to manage these issues and report on the SDG targets related to this and other SDG goals. Now let's go through the changes in the revised water and effluence. Overall, the revised water and effluence 2018 standard introduces a holistic framework for collecting information about an organization's water use, the associated impacts and how it addressed them. The revised standard allows companies and their stakeholders to understand the impacts on precious freshwater resources, particularly in areas where the ability to meet the human and ecological demand for water is already under stress. The amount of water withdrawn and consumed by an organization and the quality of its discharges can impact the functioning of the ecosystems. Consequently, these impacts can have wider social and economic consequences for local communities. As such, the management approach section has been significantly expanded to capture how organizations manage water as a shared resource and how they manage impacts at a local level. Content on discharge from the GRI 306 Effluence and Waste Standard has been incorporated into the GRI 303 Water and Effluence Standard to help provide the full picture of water impacts, from withdrawal to discharge and consumption. More detail is now required on reporting water discharge information, including the quality of water discharges, substances of concern present in effluent, and the approach to setting the minimum standards for the quality of effluent discharges. There is a new disclosure on water consumption. From an impact perspective, it helps to measure water that is not returned back to the environment. Therefore, reporting water consumption can inform an understanding of impacts on downstream water availability. The emphasis is now on areas with water stress when reporting water withdrawal, discharge and consumption due to the local nature of water issues. This gives information on how areas with water stress are affected and where action to address these impacts is needed most. The distinction to freshwater and other water is introduced for reporting water withdrawal and water discharge. This allows to capture the impact an organization has on critical freshwater resources and promotes positive practices to manage water of a lower quality. GRI 303 Water and Effluence has introduced a requirement to report impacts in the value chain, to encourage change of disclosure practice since these impacts have been consistently underreported. A new reporting requirement asks organizations about how they interact with water and the impacts across the value chain. Reporting recommendations have also been added to report quantitative information about water use in the supply chain. This information is not always available, but the disclosure encourages companies to set up management systems to meet the requirements. 
There are new recommendations to report facility level information for water withdrawal and water consumption. This is the kind of information that will be demanded more and more in the future, as measuring impacts at a local level will become much more relevant. More extensive guidance has been added throughout the standard, including example tables for presenting data in a consolidated way, new and updated definitions to align all reporters on the key concepts and terms used in the standard, and recommended formulas for calculating the data. We will now look at the content of the standard. Here you see an overview of all the disclosures included in the new water and effluent standard. There are two disclosures for an organization to explain its management approach towards water and effluents. They include qualitative information to understand how an organization interacts with water and manages any associated impacts. And there are three topic-specific disclosures to report on key elements of performance and impact from water use. These include disclosures on water withdrawal, water discharge and water consumption. Due to the strong relationship between water withdrawal, consumption and discharge, the reporting organizations are encouraged to report on all three of these topic-specific disclosures. Each disclosure can have additional requirements on how to compile and present the information, along with recommendations and guidance. The requirements set basic expectations for reporting and are as universally applicable as possible. Recommendations reflect new trends and leading practice related to a disclosure, but might not be achievable for all organizations because of the level of transparency or detail they entail. Recommendations are also the place for organizations to disclose their best practice in water reporting. Guidance includes background information, explanations and examples, which help reporters understand the requirements and recommendations and compiling the data for them. The next slides give an overview of the information requested in each of these disclosures. Disclosure 3031 requests an organization to disclose narrative information about how it interacts with water as a shared resource, to understand the importance of water to the organization overall and the impact it may have, and how the organization mitigates the impact and manages water as a shared resource. It requests organizations to describe how they interact with water, including how and where water is withdrawn, consumed and discharged, and the water-related impacts caused or contributed to, or directly linked to the organization's activities, products or services by a business relationship. For example, impacts caused by runoff. The approach used to identify water-related impacts, including the scope of assessments, their time frame, and any tools or methodologies used. It further requests organizations to describe how water-related impacts are addressed, including how the organization works with stakeholders to steward water as a shared resource, and how it engages with suppliers or customers with significant water-related impacts. The process for setting any water-related goals and targets that are part of the organization's management approach and how they relate to public policy and the local context of each area with water stress. When disclosing this information, it is important that organizations disclose it for the full value chain and not only direct operations. Disclosure 3032 requests an organization to disclose narrative information about how it manages impacts related to water discharge. It requests a description of any minimum standards it has set for the quality of effluent discharge and how these minimum standards are determined, including how an organization determines standards for facilities in locations with no local discharge requirements, whether it has developed any internal water quality standards or guidelines, whether it has considered any sector-specific standards, and whether the organization has considered the profile of the receiving water body. In the context of the GRI standards, minimum standards are those that go beyond regulatory requirements in controlling the quality of effluent discharge. Next are the topic-specific disclosures. Disclosure 3033 requires organizations to disclose quantitative information about their water withdrawal. 
Here, there is a new distinction for reporting information regarding areas with water stress. Organizations are required to report their total water withdrawal for all areas and separately for areas with water stress, broken down by surface water, groundwater, seawater, produced water, and third-party water, where third-party water is water supplied by municipal water networks or other organizations. In addition, if organizations source third-party water from areas with water stress, they are required to report the original sources of this water. Organizations are further required to report a breakdown of total water withdrawal from each of these sources by fresh water and other water, where fresh water is water with a concentration of total dissolved solids equal to or below 1000 mg per liter, and other water constitutes any water that has a concentration of total dissolved solids higher than 1000 mg per liter. The organization is only required to provide this breakdown for the sources it has withdrawn water from. If all water withdrawn from a source, such as surface water or seawater, belongs only to one category, the organization can report the volume for the remaining category as zero. For example, if all the seawater withdrawn belongs to the other water category, because it has a concentration of total dissolved solids higher than 1000 mg per liter, the organization can report the volume of fresh water under this source as zero. In this way, it is immediately clear if fresh water sources are affected by the organization while allowing to disclose information about water of a lower quality that an organization may be managing in significant volumes. Finally, organizations are required to report any contextual information that is necessary to understand how the data have been compiled, such as any standards, methodologies and assumptions used. This improves comparability and credibility of data for stakeholders using the organization's report. The guidance to this disclosure provides further information on how to assess areas with water stress and the difference between fresh water and other water. Disclosure 3034 requires organizations to disclose quantitative information about their water discharge. Organizations are required to report total water discharge to all areas broken down by destination, which includes surface water, groundwater, seawater, and third party water. If an organization discharges water to third parties, it is required to report the volume of the water that is sent for use to other organizations, if this is applicable. This information speaks to the positive practices of circular water management and efforts to reduce primary water withdrawal. The discharge destinations are aligned with withdrawal sources, with the exception of produced water. This allows to arrive at a water balance and understand the organization's impact on specific type of water resources. For this disclosure, organizations are also required to report a breakdown of total water discharge to all areas and separately a breakdown of total water discharge to areas with water stress by fresh water and other water. Organizations are also required to report the priority substances of concern for which discharges are treated, including how they define priority substances of concern and whether they have used any international standard, authoritative list or criteria for this. The approach for setting discharge limits for priority substances of concern and the number of incidents of non-compliance with discharge limits. Same as in the previous disclosure, organizations are required to report any contextual information that is necessary to understand how the data have been compiled, such as any standards, methodologies and assumptions used to improve the comparability and credibility of data. The guidance to this disclosure provides more information on how to identify priority substances of concern and the difference between fresh water and other water. The last topic-specific disclosure is new to the standard. It requires organizations to report total water consumption from all areas and separately total water consumption from areas with water stress. Some companies may have operations that require to put significant volumes of water in storage, such that it is not available for use by others in the reporting period. 
In these instances, organizations are required to report the figure for the change in water storage in the reporting period. This requirement may not be applicable to the majority of the reporting companies. If this is the case, they can report reasons for emissions. Finally, as calculations of water consumption can vary greatly between sectoral practices, organizations are required to report any contextual information necessary to understand how the data have been compiled. It includes any standards, methodologies and assumptions used and whether the information is calculated, estimated, modeled or sourced from direct measurements. The organization is also required to report the approach taken for this, such as the use of any sector-specific factors. The guidance to this disclosure provides formulas for calculating water consumption and change in water storage, and all organizations are required to use the definition of water consumption as it is defined in the glossary to allow comparability of reported volumes. The final elements that will be new to reporters familiar with the earlier version of this standard are the tables for presenting information requested in the disclosures. These tables allow to present all information in a consolidated manner and also visually arrive at the water balance of an organization. Please note that it is not required to use these tables and reporters can amend them based on their practices, for example, by deleting fields or reporting additional information. The last two sections in the standard are a glossary with definitions for key terms used and a list of references that may be helpful for understanding and applying the standard. This standard includes new terms like water stress. It also includes terms that have been updated since the 2016 version of the standard, such as water withdrawal. Both new and updated terms are defined in the glossary. The following explanation on how to use the standard is relevant to organizations looking to prepare a report in accordance with the JIRA standards. The number of disclosures to report on depends on whether an organization has chosen the core or comprehensive reporting option under the GRI standards. As said before, GRI 103, the management approach standard, is designed to be used together with each topic-specific standard to report the management approach for any topic. So when an organization has identified water and effluence as a material topic to report on, it is required to report its management approach for this topic using the three disclosures in the management approach standard and the two management approach disclosures in GRI 303, Water and Affluence. This applies for both core and comprehensive reporters. In exceptional cases, if an organization cannot report on some of these management approach disclosures, it can use reasons for omission. Only disclosure 1031 cannot be omitted. GRI 303 Water and Effluence includes three topic-specific disclosures, disclosures 3033, 3034 and 3035. The In Accordance option determines how many topic-specific disclosures an organization is required to report. If an organization prepares its report in accordance with the core option, it is required to report on at least one of these topic-specific disclosures. An organization that prepares its report in accordance with a comprehensive option is required to report on all topic-specific disclosures. Reasons for omission are permitted for all topic-specific disclosures if, in exceptional cases, the organization cannot report on these. However, it is important to note that due to the strong relationship between water withdrawal, consumption and discharge, the reporting organization is encouraged to report on all three topic-specific disclosures of GRI 303 Water and Effluence 2018. Through a comprehensive understanding of its water use, an organization can assess the impacts it has on water resources that benefit the ecosystem, other water users, and consequently the organization itself. The new GRI 303 Water and Effluence 2018 standard will be effective for reports or other materials published on or after 1 January 2021. This means that its use is required from that date, but earlier adoption is encouraged. GRI 303 Water 2016 
can continue to be used for reports or other materials if they are published on or before 31 December 2020. But since the new standard represents leading best practice on water stewardship reporting, existing users of GRI 303 Water are advised to start using the new standard right away, even if they cannot yet meet all requirements needed for core or comprehensive. An organization reporting on GRI 303 Water and Effluence for the first time is advised to start reporting with the new standard. If you need more information, please refer to the frequently asked questions about this standard on the GRI Standards website. And for any other questions that are not covered there, you can send us an email to standards at globalreporting.org. Translations into key languages will be available from the last quarter of 2018. Keep an eye on the GRI Standards website for the upcoming translation schedule. To learn more, you can join one of the live webinars where GRI will respond to questions from the audience. A morning and an afternoon session are planned on 19 September. Register for these sessions by clicking on the links that are available in the description of this video, here below. Thank you for listening. We hope this has given a good overview of the new GRI Water and Effluence 2018 reporting standard. We invite you to download the standard from our website if you haven't done so yet and to get started with it. Thanks again and goodbye.